Hi everyone, this is Ishidi Unersmint. I'm with Life Wellness, and uh, today I'm gonna go through the best of the Azores. It's one of our more popular packages. You can either do this as an uh, a company package with a small group, or as a self-guided do-it-yourself uh, travel plan. So today we'll go over and provide you an overview of the Azores, just to make sure we're all on the same page, give you a little bit of background. Um, we'll go through why we think these are the, uh, the best four islands to visit. Uh, we'll walk you through the travel plan and we'll actually go through some, uh, a bit of a pictorial walkthrough as to some of the sites that you'll see as part of this plan. But before we do that, just a little bit on uh, life wellness. So we're a network of uh, unique partners in the Azores, all dedicated uh, to ensuring that you have um, the best experience that you can as, uh, as you put your travel plans together to go to the Azores or to Portugal for that matter. So we have about 30 accommodations ranging from uh, yurts uh, for a specialized experience to organic farms, to small bed and breakfasts, and all the way up to four and five star hotels as well. We've also, over the last five years, have been doing our own due diligence and working with and, and trying out some of the different experiences in the Azores. And we've uh, brought into our network those that we think that are the best that we would recommend to friends and family if they were going to the Azores. So, uh, we think those are the uh, service providers that you should be working with as well and uh, have included them and they are helping us with uh, you know, the packages that we put together. Here are some of the examples of the packages that we're offering. We have the best of, uh, best of the Azores, which is what we're gonna go through today. We also have a best of Portugal and I'll just touch on that briefly. And we have a couple of other more adventurous packages as well. And then we also have done some workshops and retreats that we have uh, help people out as, as well and here you have some pictures from uh, some of the excursions we've done as you see as you can see in one of the pictures there with the uh, small group those are the type of sizes of groups we like to do between six to 14 people um, it makes it for a more enjoyable experience we also focus on going low and slow and what is Azorian low and slow this is going um, predominantly during the low season or shoulder season so off high season we typically don't do packages during the summer in uh, in july and august we think it's a much better experience during the low and slow uh, season we also encourage a slow pace of uh, travel now a slow pace of travel and going low and slow doesn't mean that it needs to be boring right so don't confuse don't confuse it, the two and so why do we do this well just yesterday i received a message and she sent me a note indicating that she uh, had a friend that was looking to travel to the Azores and uh, quote unquote, I told him that no one could better organize his trip to the Azores than you. And I thought, well, that's nice. And I maybe should share that. And that got me thinking to a couple of other comments and feedback that we've received from guests from Hawaii. Uh, their feedback was that the detail that we uh, are putting together and helping customers with, with respect to his tour in particular, was no less than spot on. And that was kind of a nice pat on the back. I won't go through the rest of the comments here, but they are representative of, uh, you know, the, the feedback that we've gotten from some of the, um, the packages and, and guests that we've helped over, uh, over the last few months. Before we get uh, into this specific package, just to set the stage as far as where we are. So what we're looking at is packages in the Azores and Portugal. And for those of you that don't know, but if you're watching this video, you probably do know that the, uh, the Azores are in the North Atlantic, just off the coast of Portugal, about one third of the way from uh, continental Europe. We're focusing on four islands in particular, and I'll, I'll touch on why these four islands, um, but predominantly uh, São Miguel, which is the largest island, São Jorge, Pico, and Fayal. So what we have there is what many people, including ourselves, we refer to the triangle of the Azores, which is São Jorge, Pico, and Fayal, plus the larger island of São Miguel. Just to put it into perspective from a population uh, viewpoint, São Miguel is the largest, just over 50% of the population. And then São Jorge, Pico and Fial add up another, uh, you know, just under 20% between the three of them. From a landmass perspective, São Miguel and Pico make up more than half of the landmass of the Azores. And then uh, Fial and São Jorge bring in another 18% as well. So why this? Uh, a couple of uh, months ago, we started working with a group of... Uh, uh, six friends from uh, Central Canada, and uh, six women actually. 
they uh, wanted us to put together, uh, you know, the best package we could do for them. And then they wanted to continue on to Portugal. And we're going to touch on the best of Portugal in a separate video. But today we're going to focus on the best of the Azores. And so this is a high level of what we put to, uh, together for them. So uh, three days on São Jorge, and I'll take you, I'll provide a little bit more detail on that. And then three days on Pico. And uh, for them, we did uh, three days on San Miguel. But as part of this package, we've added in an extra day just to make it a little bit more relaxed and uh, give you an opportunity to uh, take in San Miguel because there is so much to see there. And so why these four islands? Why are they, for us, considered to be the best of the users? Well, certainly San Miguel is beautiful, but with one additional inter-island flight, you get to discover three more islands. And these three other islands, the Triangle, as I referred to earlier, they're accessible by ferry all year round. So it's not just during a high season. Sometimes the ferry between islands that runs during the summer months kind of falls off uh, after the end of September. Uh, but during uh, the off season, the shoulder and low season, the ferry still continues all year round between the Triangle Islands. And so that makes it for a very enjoyable experience any time of the year. So all the islands in the Azores are, uh, are unique and have their own special beauty. But these three in particular, putting these three together with San Miguel, we think are the best of the Azores. Why? So, George, I refer to it as the island of Fajange, not only myself, but many people do because there are over 70 Fajange on, on saint George. I'll explain uh, why that is uh, when we look at some of the pictures in, the, in a couple minutes. But saint George, like Florge, is uh, really raw, unspoiled uh, nature. And, you know, it's it has breathtaking coastlines, both from the land and from the sea. And of course, it's also renowned for its cheese. On Pico, you've got Portugal's tallest point at uh, 2,351 meters. You have a UNESCO World Heritage Site for its vineyards. They are renowned for their fine wines. And it's also one of the best places in the Azores for whale watching and dolphins as well. As part of this package as well, you'll also get to uh, see Fayal. Fayal has a beautiful uh, port city of Orta. It's one of the top marinas that many people uh, doing uh, transatlantic crossings uh, stop in. It's also home to the last volcanic eruption in the Azores, I refer to it as the Pompeii of the Azores, with its uh, ash-covered village of Capulinus, which was uh, last active in 1957-58. It also has picturesque uh, landscapes and beautiful views back to Pico. So what do we do here from a logistics perspective? Um, you basically fly into San Miguel. Most of the flights uh, come in through San Miguel. And then the short inter-island flight is uh, just under an hour, about 50 minutes, from Ponta Delgada to San Jorge. And then once you're on San Jorge, you basically, once you've done your three days, there's a short ferry ride. It's 50 minutes across the channel between um, San Jorge and Pico. And then uh, to Orta uh, it, from Madalena, that's another 20 minutes uh, when you do your day trip to, uh, to Fayal. So as we do on many of our packages, we allow individuals to come in early and to stay later. And so they can opt during their pre-days to take on some of the added uh, on options that they can do in San Miguel. So for example, there's thermal baths, horseback riding, there's some adventure tours, canyoning, biking. Um, and on San George, you can do canyoning as well. There's a plenty of hiking available or nature walks, there's snorkeling, kayaking. And so if there if for activities that are not included as part of uh, the package and you would really like to you know, do um, a certain activity, you can always come in a bit earlier or stay uh, some extra days at the end in San Miguel as well. The first day is usually a rest and recover day. You can typically get to San Jorge in the late morning from San Miguel. So typically flights come in you know, red eye. So arrive in San Miguel in the morning, then you take a mid morning connection to, um, to St. George and you're at your hotel uh, around noon. So use that day to rest and recover and uh, get some rest and then ready for the next day where we have either a full day excursion where you see the highlights of St. George. So this is a guided tour or alternatively, what we've been doing for some people and they quite enjoy this is a half day tour where you get to see the really important points of uh, St. George, but then you, uh, you include one of the best hikes or walks in the Azores to the Caldera de Susan Christ, and I'll, I'll show you some, some pictures of that and why we, um, 
we've started to include that as part of an option here. And then, of course, there's a free day on St. George, and here is where you can take in some additional nature walks. You can visit the cheese factory. You can spend the, the day in Vellish, or if it's a nice day, take in uh, one of the many natural pools on the island. And, of course, during the evenings, there's also the option to do a, a yacht sunset cruise, and we'll show you a picture of that as well. And then on to Pico, short ferry ride across. Um, on the first day over to Pico, this is where there's an opportunity to do some uh, some whale watching. Now, not everyone wants to do whale watching, so that's why it's an it's an option. So it's there. There's a placeholder for it if people want to do it, um, but it's not necessarily you must do this. So here's an option to opt in or not. And then uh, we have a full uh, full day on Pico as well. So the next day is a full day on Pico where uh, you can see the top sites and then spend, typically people like to spend the afternoon in, uh, in the UNESCO World Heritage uh, Vineyards, so in the, the wine area of uh, Le Gidou and Clisson Vella, and then they can visit the wine museum, there's the wine co-op, do some taste testing, and then uh, another day still staying on Pico, but you take the short ferry ride over to, uh, to Orta, to Fayal, and uh, have a full day guided excursion as well with Fayal. Usually a good day in Fayal will cover all of the top sites and you'll have lunch in Fayal and then come back to, um, to Pico for the evening. And then we continue on the next day to San Miguel. So the next day being a travel day, we usually like to provide that day in the afternoon to kind of just enjoy taking the city. So Ponta Delgada is um, the largest city in, uh, in the Azores and on San Miguel. So there's an opportunity just to spend some time in Ponta Delgada when you arrive. The next day is a full day excursion to the eastern side of the island where you'll get to visit um, the Terra Nostra Park. It's one of the more beautiful parks in the Azores. There's some thermal baths. You'll see some pictures of it in a bit. And you also get to try the uh, the cozita lunch, which is cooked in the, in the fumarole. So that's all included as part of the package. And then we also have a half day guided tour as well on the western side of the island. This is only a half day because you're closer to Setsidaj on the western side. And then you have a half day uh, tour, guided tour of the western side of the island around Setsidaj. Ponta Delgada is closer to Setsidaj and that's why we only allow for a, a half day uh, to make it more efficient. You don't need a, a full day to go to Setsidaj and see some of the major sites around there. And then you'll have another half day free day to take in some of the things that you're most interested in as well. And in addition to that, uh, there's a full free day in Ponta Delgada where you have an opportunity to enjoy some of the gardens, do some of the shopping, or just enjoy Ponta Delgada. On a recent visit that I had to Ponta Delgada, I had a beautiful day, no itinerary, just walked around, meandered, and just let go with the flow, just go where it takes you, just explore some of the side streets. Ponta Delgada during the day is also completely different from Ponta Del Delgada at night. So although you might do a walk around during the day, You'll definitely want to do a walk around at night as well, just to enjoy the um, the, the, the night sights in, in San Miguel. So as far as the pictorial of what's included as part of this package, we start off with San Jorge, which is uh, known as the Dragon Island. And I have a Peter Adrian's that kind of really brings that to life. The, uh, the uh, island looks like a, a dragon, dragon half submerged in the ocean kind of coming up. And uh, one of the reasons that... Um, uh, Saint George is unique is because of the Fajange. What are Fajange? There are over 70 of them on, on Saint George, and Fajange are low lying coastal plains. So you have one here in the in the uh, in the picture. That's a the Fajange du Ovidur on the north side of the island. And uh, it's a typical Fajange. You can actually drive down to these Fajans, and there are some of them that you can't even walk to. Here's another view from the north side as well. Here we have the uh, the Fajan Shkubj over in the in the foreground and typically the the hike I was suggesting you could do as part of a half day in the afternoon after you do the uh, the guided half day in the morning is you get dropped off here at the entrance to the the hiking trail to the Caldeta many people consider this to be one of the best hikes in the Azores and so what you would do is you get dropped at this part of the uh, the Fajan the the Shkubj so this over here is Fajan the Shkubj and then uh, you do a walk about 45 minutes to an hour along these, uh, these cliffs, this, uh, this coastline, and you end up at uh, the Caldera de Susan Christ, which is the image that I have here up on the screen now. 
This is the lagoon. And so this is the lagoon that's been formed in a volcanic crater. This one is formed down at the ocean level. And so there's a beautiful lagoon here that you can take a swim just to refresh after your walk. Some of the other sites on during uh, your trip or your time on Saint George, you'll have an opportunity to vi visit the main village of Village, where the uh, ferry comes in and out of. And then along the western side uh, towards uh, Rosage, which is the, um, the village you see here in the background, actually where I was born. And then further on west is the park of Setfunt. You could easily spend, you know, two, three hours just walking around this uh, this park here. It's very peaceful, a lot of birds. Uh, you can even walk further along to a, a, a lookout along the north side as well. And then as you head through uh, the south side of the island, there are many grottos. This is a, a microclimate zone. So this is a, uh, a, a grotto here in Ursulina. And uh, some more hiking. And if you like hiking, so certainly St. George is a great place to do some hiking. So as you can see here, this is pedestrian only access to some of these fajaj and uh, the lush vegetation. This is a hike down from the north side of the island down to the Caldera to St. Christ. It almost seems that there's no uh, no path, but it's just uh, uh, amazing uh, vegetation and, and green. So if you enjoy hiking and walking, certainly allow for some extra time on St. George to take all of this in. Uh, just to, again, some, some of the scenery, uh, this would be going down on the north side of the island. So just an amazing scenery on the island. And as well, one of the other options during your, your free time is uh, either snorkeling or swimming in the natural lagoon. So this is certainly a, a unique place to go for a nice, refreshing swim. And as I mentioned as well, one of uh, the top things on, on St. George is to visit one of the uh, cheese factories. This is a picture from the largest cheese factory, not only on St. George, but probably in the Azores. They have uh, seven refrigerated rooms, and these rooms hold up to 30,000 wheels of cheese. The, the wheels of cheese that you see here in the picture each weigh between 20 and 24 pounds, so 10 to uh, 12 kilos. So there's a ton of cheese, <laughs> literally uh, a lot of cheese in these uh, refrigerators. And as well, I mentioned the, the Sunset uh, Cruise with one of our partners here, Pedro, who's uh, uh, sailing the channel between uh, Pico and Saint George. Here we have the sunset from uh, from land and looking towards Pico, which was where we head to next. So this is the pretty and picturesque village of um, Madeline, looking back with uh, Pico Mountain in the background. And as I mentioned, one of the top sites is uh, Pico Mountain. So you can actually uh, climb up uh, Pico Mountain. I would allow for a day. I did it recently, and it took three hours to get from the base of the uh, the mountain house up to the volcanic crater, which is just along here. And then another 20 to 25 minutes to get to the very tip of uh, Piquino, which is very doable. But if you do decide to do this, you need to have a full day. And then I would also allow for a day to recover because it takes uh, another three hours uh, for the climb down. And I will be putting a video together of that hike. So be sure to watch for it as well. And of course, I mentioned that um, uh, Pico is also uh, renowned for its uh, its wines and vineyards. And so here we have an aerial view of the uh, Cria San Velha and some of the top wines uh, that are manufactured, produced on Pico. The Frey Gigante, the Legido, which is a different area from Cria San Velha, Terres de Lava, and uh, a famous wine that was exported to Russia previously, the Kazar wine as well. This is another uh, image here looking towards Fayal in the background at the uh, Pico uh, Wine Museum, an opportunity to visit it as well. And one of the restored windmills that you can visit on the island. As you can see here, the, the land formation on Pico is completely different from uh, th that on, on Saint Georges. Well, here's another example where they don't have as many fajans as you uh, would see on Saint Georges. And as I mentioned, one of the options here, and definitely I think a to do, is uh, the whale watching and uh, and dolphin watching as well one of the top sites you know i was speaking to some people recently and they referred to the azores as kind of a uh, a highway um, of, uh, of mammals uh, mar marine life and in particular whales and dolphins just through the azores and in particular uh, around san miguel and also around the uh, the triangle islands and pico as well and of course, this doesn't happen very often, but when it does, it is certainly a magical moment to see uh, 
one of the whales jumping out of the, the water. And then also, uh, as part of your stay on uh, on Pico, there is a, uh, a one-day excursion to Fayales. And you can see here, you get an, uh, this is from the Pico Mountain House on uh, from Pico looking towards Fayal. It's a short ferry ride across, as I mentioned, 20 minutes. Basically have the day on on Fayal to enjoy, have lunch, and then come back to, uh, to Pico. Some pictures on Fayal. There's uh, one of the top sites, of course, is visiting the... Uh, the marina in Orta. Here's a, a better view of the uh, very pretty and, and beautiful city of Orta and its marina. Certainly worth uh, spending some time here. It's a beautiful island. And as I mentioned, one of the top sites here is the uh, the Pompeii of the Azores, so the ash-covered village of Kapaling. So Kapaling would have been here in this area. You can see the lighthouse. We'll see a better picture of it coming up. But the, uh, the volcanic eruption actually happened off, uh, offshore. And so uh, it wasn't on land on the island, but there was so much ash that was spewed from the, uh, the volcano that the, um, the uh, area where the volcano uh, erupted actually ended up connecting the landmass uh, from uh, Fayal, where the lighthouse is, towards where the uh, eruption was happening offshore. Here you see uh, the lighthouse from uh, from inland looking out towards it. And just below this area here is a very large interpretation center. You'll see some trails here. You'll see some people actually climbing up here. And you can hike all around this area here as well. Another beautiful view uh, looking towards the uh, the beach of Port Ping and towards uh, the city of Orte as well. And of course, one of the top sites as well and certainly something you can do on uh, an extra day, not part of the, the, the tour, but you can also do a, a, a hike around the rim of this crater. It's the largest volcanic crater on Fayal, and it's a beautiful walk around. It, the suggested time is about two and a half hours. I did it in about two hours, and I wasn't rushed. I was taking a lot of pictures and just taking it all in, so very doable, very easy walk to do. This is the uh, view of Setsi Dodge, the Blue Lake and the, and the Green Lake. It's uh, one of the more famous pictures of the Azores, if you will. It's used in a lot of the tourism brochures, and uh, many of you will probably have seen this picture as well. We mentioned that Ponta Delgada is the largest you know, city in the Azores, and uh, certainly walking through it, uh, you know, you'll, you're basically stepping back in time several hundred years. It, but within uh, the city limits, there's uh, parks that you can just sit down and enjoy. This isn't one of the larger parks. It's just a garden. Uh, as you're walking through the city center. Very enjoyable, very picturesque, a lot of Baroque uh, buildings and architecture. The, the sidewalks, it's almost uh, you know, artistic in, in, in how they have been designed with the, the, the black and, and white rocks as well. And I'm, as I mentioned, just walking through Punta de Delgada at night uh, and, the, and then during the day, completely different uh, perspective. So even though you might do a nice walk during the day, You'll certainly want to go back and have a walk around the city at night. You get a completely different uh, perspective on the city as well. So just some, shown some pictures here along the uh, along the coast and some more. Um, this is some more pictures on the uh, western side of the island towards Setsi Dodge. This is also a picture that's used in a lot of um, uh, tourism brochures. It's uh, looking towards Setsi Dodge as well, towards Boca do Inferno as they call it, the Lago, near the Logo do Canario. So very picturesque, very beautiful city. And just seeing these pictures, you'll understand why San Miguel is referred to as the Green Island. Very lush vegetation as well. You can easily spend much more than the four days. But certainly the four days will give you a, a sense of all that San Miguel has to offer. And as I mentioned, one of the days is a, a, a day tour to Furnish. This is a picture of Furnish some fumaroles, and during the, the day tour, there's uh, some time to uh, allow you to visit the Terra Nostra Park. This is within the park. These are naturally heated uh, thermal waters, uh, iron rich, and that's the color, the dark brown uh, color, very warm. Some people uh, say that they have therapeutic properties, so you'll want to take that in. And in the park as well, there's some other hot springs as well that um, aren't design rich, but uh, very enjoyable as well. And of course, if you enjoy doing hikes in San Miguel, there's plenty of additional hikes and trails that you can do. This one here is the Ribeira dos Caldeirões, 
which you will enjoy. And you can visit the tea plantations. There are two main ones, the only two in, in Europe, actually. And so this is uh, uh, one of the two. It, uh, you can either visit Chagurian or the Port Famous uh, Tea Factory as well. And they also have a pineapple plantation that you can take in during some of your free time if you're so inclined. Or as I did, I took a two hour horsebacking uh, ride and went around, not around, but along the rim of Sitsidaj, that uh, crater that had the two lakes, the Blue Lake and the Green Lake. This is a um, one of the uh, the tours that's available that you can do, very enjoyable. Now, as far as what's included in the self-guided package versus an accompanied package, accommodations are included in, in both. Meals, breakfast are included in both. With the accompanied package, because it's a group and there's a, a bit more time for us to organize lunches and dinners, so we have four lunches included with the accompanied package and six dinners included as well. Um, with the uh, self-guided, there's more opportunity for you to pick and choose depending where you are. So consider it kind of a self-paced package where depending where you are, depending how you're feeling, you can decide uh, where you want to go. We'll certainly make recommendations in, in different uh, towns and villages so you can have options to pick from. But with a self-guided plan, you basically decide where you want to have lunches and dinners. As far as uh, guides or accompaniment, with the self-guided package, there are uh, full or half-day guided packages on every island, on the four, each of the four islands, as well with the accompanied package. In addition to that, you're accompanied throughout all 10 days. So on the island tours, on the hikes, on the excursions, you have some uh, help there as well. As far as free days, both packages have two full free days and two half days that are also free. So you can fill those in with what you want to do or simply rest and relax. That's always an option as well. As far as land transportation, with the self-guided do-it-yourself package, there's a rental car included with the accompanied package. No need for a rental car because we have transportation taken care of uh, within the islands on land and on sea. So sea transportation is also included. It's not included with the self-guided package, not because of the cost, it's simply convenience. It's just much easier if you're on your own just to you know, walk up on the day that you're going or the day before, pick up your ferry tickets, and then you're good to go. It's uh, logistics are a lot, a lot cleaner that way. In either case, uh, do we include uh, air or flights or travel uh, insurance related to your trip? So we, we leave that to individuals to do it. Why do we do that? Because there's just so many options out there and it's so easy to do online now. We have people who want to use points. They want to use credit cards so they get their insurance. So there's many different ways uh, to arrange for flights and travel insurance. So we leave that up to individuals. We'll certainly guide you and provide you with uh, some uh, suggestions uh, as we'll actually speak to that in a little bit. Some of the added benefits of doing an accompanied uh, small group package. Of course, we think it's more complete, it's more in depth and it's a more authentic experience because you'll get to meet a lot more of the locals, you'll get more color commentary throughout the, the 10 days as opposed to just when you're doing the, the guided tour. So we think it's a much richer experience. And also you can sometimes, you know, there's more of the unexpected things that can happen, things you, 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 don't, um, you don't plan for. So for example, one time we were in Porto, this is not an example of news, there's, but we were taking a night walk through Porto, decided to go out buy a bottle of port, you know, enjoy some port in Porto. And then uh, my wife decided uh, it would be nice to uh, do some folklore dance, put on some uh, Portuguese folklore music, and basically we're uh, having an instructional session on how to do folklore dance in Portugal. And everyone got into it, and it was probably one of the highlights of the trip, and it was totally unexpected and totally unplanned for. We had another opportunity as well when we were walking through Albidouche, where we stopped into this little uh, guitar maker shop, started talking to the guitar maker. One thing led to the other. And before you know it, one of the members in the group started uh, playing a song and everybody in the group started clapping along and, uh, and had a, a great time as well. So just some examples of things that just happen spontaneously and you can't plan for those, but make a trip all that much uh, more special. And of course, there's always uh, help available to deal with the unexpected. We've had, for example, a person who had uh, 
uh, you know, the sole on their shoe came off. And so we were able to get to the shoe to a, um, a shoemaker and they got the shoe taken care of and we were good to go. Someone else needed to get to the pharmacy. And uh, so we hopped in the car, went over to the ph pharmacy and got them some eye drops. So little things like that are always uh, nice to have as part of some support on the trip. And of course, the best part and something that you can't quantify and put value on is the friendships that are created. And so far, uh, we've been fortunate enough that the groups and people that we've had with us on, on tours and packages, you know, they join us as participants, but they, they leave as friends and a lot of friendships uh, were created. And actually that was one of the comments that came to us in uh, some of the comments I provided earlier. Where do we stay? For this particular package, we typically stay at Contingish Bougain Village in Saint George. Plenty of pictures online, and I'll show a little bit more in a bit. Uh, in Villa Barca on uh, on Pico in Madalena, and then on São Miguel, these are two sister properties, either Casa do Patio or Casa das Palmeiras. Beautiful homes, historic homes in the heart of uh, Ponta Delgada. Beautiful breakfast, just very nice people. You'll really enjoy staying there. We have some additional pictures on each of those properties here, but certainly they don't do them justice. Do go to the website and have a look at the, in a little bit more detail on a, and on a full screen, but just uh, beautiful properties, beautiful homes, and we'll think they just make your experience all that much more enjoyable. And so with respect to flights from North America, you can get to uh, Ponte Delgada direct from Toronto, Boston, and New York. Uh, throughout the year, sometimes they have flights from uh, uh, Oakland direct as well and from uh, Montreal. So there are other options. Usually it's a, a red-eye flight, so they get in at 6 to 7 in the morning into Ponte Delgada, which is great because in Ponte Delgada, it's a, it's a hub. And so you can connect to other islands from there. And so then the next flight would then be from um, Ponte Delgada, usually mid-morning. And then, you know, 50-minute flight to St. George for this particular package. As an alternative, uh, it might be more convenient. And we've had some people wanting to do this because they wanted to use points where they flew direct to Lisbon and then purchase a separate ticket, return ticket from Lisbon to, uh, to the Azores. So that's also an option. Very easy flight. Uh, you're basically in uh, one hour difference as far as time zones but uh, very easy flight, so that could be an option as well. And then from, from Europe, there are direct flights from numerous cities. I've listed some of them here. So those will take you straight into the Azores, some of them to Ponta, many of them actually to Ponta Delgada, some of them into the Seda, and some of them even into Fayal and, uh, and Pico as well. So uh, you do have multiple options, especially if you're coming in from, from Europe. And then, you know, as I mentioned, this was a, a package that uh, came together when we were looking to do a, a package for a group of friends uh, from, uh, from Canada. So what they did on their trip is on their, after they were finished in the Azores, they actually flew from Ponta Delgada to Porto and then started on in Porto and did three days there, two days in central Portugal, and then finished off in, uh, in Lisbon with some option for some additional days in, uh, in Lisbon or in the Sintra area, which is beautiful. I won't get into details for the Best of Portugal tour, but I am gonna to put together a, a separate video for that one. So you'll get to see uh, a bit of an overview if you're interested in either just doing the Best of Portugal on its own or perhaps combining it with your trip to the Azores and uh, getting basically a, a two for one. And so there you have it. There's an overview of the Best of the Azores. And with this 10 day package, we think you really get a good overview of the Azores, not only San Miguel, but also some of the other smaller islands as well. And kind of a very thorough uh, introduction to the Azores. Of course, there's so much more to see, so much more to explore. We'd certainly welcome any suggestions or comments or feedback that you have. What do you think should be included? Did we miss anything? Drop us a note or add a comment below to the video. We'd certainly welcome your feedback. If you're interested in joining Celeste and I on a company small group tour, just uh, send us a note at reservations at lifewellnessazores.com. And as well, if you're interested in a self-guided do-it-yourself version, or if you prefer a tailored personalized plan to include some additional islands, additional activities, we can help you with that as well. So visit us at lifewellnessazores.com and we'll make your trip to the Azores or continental Portugal the best that it can be. Safe travels, everyone.